Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I was going to give a, a brief introduction. Some of you do know me. Um, of course, I grew up in Ebenezer. Um, so some of you have seen me since I was very small um, and then <laughs> haven't seen me for a little while. Um, so yes, I grew up in Ebenezer, but I've been in Liverpool for the last um, 12 years, 2007, 13. Okay, so it's 13 years. I've been going to a church the whole time I've been here. I've been going to Christ Church Liverpool. Um, which is a church who are city centre based and we um, aim to reach city centre people, which means um, anyone who lives, works or studies in the city centre, although we're not strict about that, but that's our kind of focus and goal, um, because the church, when it was planted in 2003, felt that there was no other ministry to people who came to live or work or study in the city centre. Um, and so there's lots going on in the suburbs, but a lot of people who came to Liverpool would go to the centre. Uh, so we are a church for the centre of Liverpool, which means we um, often have people who come and stay for a few years, but then leave. Perhaps um, young professionals or graduates or students. Um, and we've adjusted to that. So actually, as a church, we've got a handful of people who've been here for a while um, and a large number of people who, who've been here for less than three years. Um, but that's okay. Um, that's that's what's needed for our church at the moment. And since about um, 2013, I think, I've been an elder at Christ Church. And this uh, September, I've um, been appointed to be one of the pastors of the church. What I want to share with you is uh, something from the Bible. Um, it will be helpful, I think, if you have a Bible to hand, um, if you're able to read along with me. Um, I'm going to look, we're going to be looking at 1 Samuel chapter 2 verses 1 to 10. Then Hannah prayed and said, my heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord my horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Do not keep talking so proudly or let your mouth speak such arrogance. For the Lord is a God who knows. And by him, deeds are weighed. The bows of the warriors are broken. But those who stumbled are armed with strength. Those who were full hire themselves out for food, but those who were hungry are hungry no more. She who was barren has borne seven children, but she who has had many sons pines away. The Lord brings death and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and raises up. The Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes and has them inherit a throne of honour. For the foundations of the earth are the Lord's. Upon them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his saints, but the wicked will be silenced in darkness. It is not by strength that one prevails. Those who oppose the Lord will be shattered. He will thunder against them from heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. One of the things I've... Um, that I have missed during lockdown um, and actually I haven't been doing it much before but something that I have felt I would love to keep doing more is going up mountains um, and um, I was on the phone to a friend um, of mine not so long ago and he goes up mountains and I said I didn't really go up much before lockdown um, but now I feel all cooped up like inside, stuck inside. I want to get out and not just out onto the streets to go to the shops. I want to be in the open wide spaces. So if you go up a mountain, because he was 
often goes up. I said, let me know. I'd love to get out, out and about in nature, feel the rain on me, um, feel what it's like to get up and in that fresh air and going up a mountain. I would love to start doing that again, but I'm aware that what's probably going to happen, because I'm not as fit as I was, is I'm probably going to end up um, getting quite tired quite quickly. I'm probably going to get about a third of the way up and then get out of breath and need a bit of a break and need a pause. Um, and perhaps you can um, resonate with an experience like that if you've ever been on a walk, a long walk, um, and feel that you just need a little bit of a break. You need to pause. Um, and of course, up a mountain, you just you'd find somewhere safe and stable to pause. You'd, you'd find a good solid rock to, to lean up against and you'd take something sugary to, to build your strength back up. And perhaps you do that because you're exhausted from what's happened before, or maybe it's because you're daunted at what is coming up ahead. Um, and that's much like stages that we can be at in, in our lives. Sometimes we do find ourselves weary, and sometimes we find ourselves um, needing a break. Sometimes we find ourselves daunted at what is coming up ahead and sometimes find ourselves um, weary from what is behind. I don't know if you've ever found yourself in that position where you look ahead and think I need to be strengthened. Where will I find the strength to go on ahead? Where will I find the strength to, to face the future? Or perhaps it's just it's weariness so from, from what has gone on in the past. Well, sometimes it can feel, especially during the days that we're in right now, that more than ever, now is a time where we actually need to be quite strong. We need to be strong to persevere, to overcome, to get through these strange times that we're in. We need to be strong for one another. But what I love about this passage that um, we read in 1 Samuel chapter 2 is it's actually very surprising it says something that turns all our expectations upside down, something that's actually very liberating and takes all the pressure off us needing to be strong. Because have a look down with me at the very last line of verse nine. In my Bible, it's quite, it's grouped by verse 10, but it's the last line of verse nine. It says, it is not by strength that one prevails. Think about that for a second. It is not by strength that one prevails. We don't need to be strong. We don't need to be strong for each other. If we're at the point of thinking, where do I find the strength to go on? Well, take the pressure off. It is not by strength that anyone's going to prevail. And here's why. And this is really the main thing. Um, that I want to say this morning. Um, the one thing to remember from this is the point of this passage is that our God is the God of the weak. Our God is the God of the weak. Now, this passage is a beautiful song and it's not a pep talk, a rallying song to get us to march on forward in strength. This is a chorus of hope for the weak and for the weary. The background of this passage, uh, you may know, is it's the song of Hannah. And Hannah was uh, one of two wives of a man called Elkanah. The other wife bore him lots of children, but Hannah couldn't bear any children. And so in her life, in her town, her culture, her family, that was a source of real shame. Everyone would have known that she didn't have children. I'm sure she would have been asked the questions all the time. When's it going to be you? Do you not feel like having children? What's wrong? It's a source of shame for her and it's a source of tension in the family. And we're even told in chapter one that she is facing bullying from the other wife who taunts her. Hannah is somebody who knows what it is to be harassed. She knows what it is to be laid low. She's an outcast. She's a picture of weakness and isolation, of anxiety and of loss. 
Yet Hannah casts herself on God through tears and prayer. She brings her worry to God and God answers her prayer and gives her a son. And that son turns out to be the prophet Samuel. And because she has been given a child, then she sings this song. And this song echoes her own experience. At the centre of this song is the, the truth that God reverses the fortunes of the weak. Look at verses four and five. She gives three illustrations, three pictures to, to get that point across. Verse four, the bows of the warriors, that's the thing that makes them strong, they're broken. But on the other hand, those who had stumbled are now armed with strength. Verse five, the second picture, those who were full, full of food, they now have to hire themselves out for food. But on the other hand, those who were hungry, well, they hunger no more. And then the third picture is her own picture. She who was barren has born seven children. That's how she feels. She's only had one child, but it feels like she's had seven. But she who has had many sons pines away. The God of Hannah is the one who reverses the fortunes of the weak. It's not a promise that every single prayer will always be answered the way we want it, um, or that um, he will always do the same type of miracle he did for Hannah. But our God is the God of the weak, and he sees the weak, and he's the one who gives them the strength. And this is a song that I'd love for you guys to, to know and to take away and to experience this coming week that God is the God of the weak, that he is the one who lifts them up. I'd love your song to be one like verse eight. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. And if that's your song, then it causes rejoicing. Verse one, she says, I rejoice in the Lord. Uh, there's delight in God's deliverance. In her weakness, Hannah cast herself on the Lord. It was complete dependence and faith. Notice what she says about the Lord in verse two, by the way. She recognises that the Lord is the only one where she can lean. She's the, he's the rock that she leans on. Like halfway up that mountain, you need to, to lean on the rock. Uh, he is the rock that she's leaned on. So I want this to be your song. But here's the thing. Hannah's story and Hannah's song are in the Bible because although her pain is normal, and I'm sure many of you can really resonate with lots of what she's going through. Her song, her reaction to this is, is not. Because the truth be told, I'm sure we've all forfeited this joy and delight of her song. We've all managed to, to pass it by. Uh, certainly I have struggled to make this song my own. And that is because I don't believe deep down verse nine it is not by strength that one prevails the human race has a history of making the opposite of that our motto i'm sure you've experienced that too right from the very beginning in the garden of eden the first human beings who refused to to accept their weakness and lean on god's word right through to hannah's day and, and after her where there were kings who refused their weakness and actually mustered their own strength or looked for their strength in their allies. Right to our present day, we're always fed this lie that, that we can trust our own strength, that the strength is in us, uh, that if we have education or uh, financial security or goodwill right. or find our own identity, that somehow we will find strength and we'll have strength to prevail. When we believe that, well, we're not able to make this song our own. And I certainly think that that's the case. Every time I've not made this song my own, it's because I've been trusting in my own strength. You can't rejoice in God's strength when you've substituted it for another. How can I do that? Well, I need to look down all the way to verse 10. And the last two lines that point us to the fact that this is not just Hannah's song. This is the song of the king. This is the song of the anointed king. He will give strength to his king. There is a story that proves that God is the God of the weak. A story that shows God strengthening the weak in the ultimate display. 
if you actually were to read on after Hannah's song, you'd find that this points a lot to King David. This is a song that his life almost maps onto. He is the one who stumbled while people are chasing him with, with arrows. But he's the one where the, the bows of the warriors chasing him were broken. And David is the one who's lifted up. David is the hungry who's been filled up. Because verse 10 is true. God really does give strength to his king and exalt the horn, that, that strength of his anointed one. But of course, the whole book of 1 Samuel is not the end of the Bible. It points us further to somebody who actually lives out this song even more. And that's Jesus, of course, the, the anointed, the king. And we see in his life that he, he was weak everywhere. He was poor. He went hungry. He had to take a bit of rest in, in a boat when he wanted to sleep. He didn't have somewhere to lay his head. And he was rejected, just like Hannah. Anyone who was anyone thought Jesus was a rebel. And he was surrounded by a bunch of misfits. Jesus' life is marked by the weakness of Hannah's song. Because Jesus knows that God is the God of the weak. And yet, of course, it's true that God gives strength to his king. Because look at Jesus' ministry. It's the most powerful ministry ever. He had strength to stop the weather. He had strength to defeat the biggest enemy of all, our sin. In the life of Jesus, this song is proven. And it's actually the life of Jesus that gives me the freedom to, to accept my weakness. Because in his weakness and in his strength, Jesus accomplished everything that ever matters to me. He swapped my shame for honour, my sin for dignity, my death for hope. So what have I got to lose by being weak? What have I got to lose by being weak and leaning on the rock? In fact, if I do, I'll just be like Jesus, who is God's anointed, who is strengthened by the Lord. I'll be like Hannah, who is kind of echoing Jesus' experience tapping into God's uplifting strength. And if I am weak and look to Jesus, well, then I'll know this song. God will put this song of rejoicing in my mouth. So can I encourage you this week that our God is the God of the weak. And remember that Jesus is the one who frees us up to be weak. <laughs> Jesus is the one who's accomplished all we need so that you and I can be weak, so that we can find the rock to lean on. We can rest on him and find that by resting on him, our strength is lifted up. And in his strength, we've got all we need to face what is next. Can I just pray for us? Um, and then I think we might be going into groups or something like that. Let's, let's pray. Our dear Father, thank you that uh, you are a God of the weak. Thank you that um, we are not called to be strong, to to do amazing things for you, but that we are called to be weak like Hannah. We might be isolated or anxious, or we might be lonely, we might be bereaved or hurt, and that is the kind of person that you uplift. And Father, thank you that you invite us to lean on you, not because uh, you've decided that we are going to be amazing, but because you gave us a king who was weak, who was strengthened, who died on a cross yet rose again, you really are the God who brings death and alive. And so because of him, we are given that freedom to trust in him, rest in him, look to him as our rock. And Lord, may we do that this week. And may we know then the joy that Hannah knew. Please put this song of joy into our mouths that we can go this week rejoicing, not that we are strong, rejoicing that we're weak and rejoicing that you are strong. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen.